So, what were your guys' thoughts on on that? Yeah, or on punching in general. But, or on that press. I wish I had that press when I was working. How long did it take you to do tool changes on, on your punch press? Like three or four minutes. Yeah. Per tool? Yeah. <laughs> and so. And then, then sometimes you'd have to, you know, sharpen your tools also. <laughs> and to sharpen your tools, you, you have to be very careful. That. And if you have like a square one or something, you have to make sure that it uh, aligns correctly. Yeah. Yeah, so with that, where you can assemble it off off the machine and bring it in, it speeds that up. Um, so when we are actually taking and we're sharing something, what we're doing is we're just kind of pressing it down. Like I said, the clearance between the upper die and lower die is kind of what, when it comes through and pushes that, it kind of stretches it and it breaks it. And that determines kind of what this profile is going to look like. If it's smaller, what do you think about that? Would it help the appearance or hurt it or make it harder to cut or what? You mean thinner? What? Thinner material? No, yeah, yeah, but if the clearance is smaller? Oh, harder to cut. Yeah, it'd make it harder to cut, right? Yeah. Because you're trying to push it straight down instead of kind of bending it more. Um, but it, would, it might give you a better finish here once it did cut. But if it's bigger, it's going to be rougher, but it's going to be easier to cut. And also depending on the material thickness, because depending on the thickness, you have to have so much space. <clears throat> so the book shows it here also. The book shows it here also where it kind of comes down. And you can have them where it's either flat or angular too. So here it also shows what happens if you have too much or too little clearance. Because too little clearance can really break it off. And too much will just kind of bend it over, fold it over. <coughs> So what else can you do besides just punching holes? So that one actually had a, a bending tool on it. Can you do other bending with it on just a regular one? Using a regular punch press, can you do bending? Not in the same degree. Mm -hmm. regular punch? It kind of depends on... You can on buy an attachment for it. You can do yeah. like a circuit. So... Like a bend it. That's not pretty. So we'll do things like embosses, where you just raise it, uh, or um, slitting, or lancing. So lancing, you just you cut through it, and then you can come back with another tool and bend it up. <coughs> Slitting slits it, and then it also will can bend it up in here. So why might you want to do something like that? Hook. So if a hook. So vents, we do louvers, and then they can do that also. They, you put a louver in there where it cuts one end and then kind of just bends the other side of it. Um, but yeah, for that, for, for, for hooks, for things. So like, slides like this, where they have a little hook on the back of the slide hooked into a lance or, or into a, a thing like that. So <clears throat> on your side piece, you can see right here they have them also for, for your drawer that's going to fit into it. <clears throat> so here on yours you can either do oops, I guess that was one. You either have it where you design it like this or you can have slip and pockets in there where you can slide it into instead of having a, a vertical member. And then also um, right here is what you do on the side of your drawer to fit into the to the slit that was on the slide. So it would slide in here and then go up there to hold it in. 
so you can do it without having any fasteners to hold that slide into, into the frame and then also the drawer into the slide. So it makes assembly faster. So we had louvers, we had the slitting and, and making those. We can do lancing. Um, what else? We can roll beads too, right? Yeah, we can roll beads if they have the, the roller attachments. Um, also, can you do other things than just punching individual holes? They mentioned something called nibbling. Yeah. What's nibbling? It looked like you made like curves. Curve. No, that was the rolling. Shearing by punching out. Yeah. Over nibbling is where you have one tool and you hit it back to back. They did, they did that when they made uh, like you know, they made that circle one. Did it? Yeah, it like, no, it did have shears. Because no, they did it used a rolling thing for that, I think. Oh. Um, but nibbling is where you, where you have, of course, my. I think about wanting to work today. So you want to cut a long channel. So you have your tool that's like this, and then you take it and you hit it again here and in there. You just off. You just have your, your hits offset or overlapping so that you keep going, and then you get one long straight cut using a small tool. And so usually that's how they cut out the outside of the shape is, or if you've got a big cut out or something, you'll, you'll nibble it, so you just take like a quarter inch by one uh, die and just bam, 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 start hitting it and, and cutting it down. What? So, um, yeah, so depending on what what are you doing? So, any questions on punching? So, a lot of sheet metal is punched. Uh, next week, we'll talk about laser and, and water jet cutting. Um, but if it's not laser or water jet cut, it's punched. So, an exercise we're going to do today what did you notice on all those things? How many parts did they cut at once? Sheet. Whatever it takes to fill a sheet up, right? Yeah. So what's that? What's that called? It's called nesting. So here we've got this file that I'll put on in the H drive for you guys, where I have three parts, and we have a four by eight sheet up above, and so I want you to put at least ten of these at least 30 of those and at least 25 of those on the sheet. If you have additional space, fill it up with whatever you can. We want to have as little space on that sheet left over as possible. How do you, you want us to insert it? You mean uh, those two will so, um, Let's do a quarter inch between parts so that we can do, do our, our, our nibbling around the outside with a quarter inch by one inch and have it cut that side and that side at once. So quarter inch between parts, minimum. And so, if I did this one, and I just stuck another one next to it, is that the best way to for it to nest? No. You're not. So maybe you need to see how you can adjust them to get them to fit in tighter with each other. So are those going to be 3D or just 2D? 2D. Because it's just a, a 2D sheet, right? So here's our sheet. Uh -huh. These are just 2D. So you're just going to copy these over, do a raise or copying. And fit as many of these as you can onto the sheet. Like a little circuit board. And if you can get more than this, get as many extras as you can. Actually, I'm going to make that. No, I'll, I'll just do those. Yeah. But get, if you can get all those, then add as many other things as you can to it also. So, Try and use as much of the sheet as you can. And then oh. we'll separate a quarter inch part. Even yep. from, from the edge. Yep. Yeah, so we want a quarter inch on the edge, and then a quarter inch for all that. Actually, do them, do them a half inch from the edge. Half inch from the edge? Yeah. 
Put those in, and let's have it a contest. So 